you know how powerful you are? Welcome to Rise Urban Nation. Welcome everybody to Rise Urban Nation. Reshaping and elevating your mindset to help you achieve what you believe. Sometimes we don't even see our own greatness. You can't be what you can't see. And connecting black cultures to build a community of talent and success. Black people need to realize that they are assets. You are an asset. When we rise, you rise. Come together as a group. This is Rise Urban Nation with Terrell Simmons. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Rise Urban Nation. Yeah, I said Rise Urban Nation. Um, I, I'm probably going to say the full story for you guys at another episode, but we unfortunately, there's another Rise Panoris that's out there, and we're in the middle of a, a trademarking dispute, so we're going to have to switch names, unfortunately. Uh, anyhow, this episode that we're going to have on the new Rise Urban Nation, same Rise Panoris, but just a whole new name. <laughs> we, we get to speak to two amazing gentlemen that I, I got to to meet uh, some time ago, Eric McLoyd, Scott Stewart, and not the Scott Stewart from ESPN. No, they're the co-host of the Money, Sex, and Gen X podcast, and it's a weekly podcast with conversations between gentlemen. These Shot town based hosts feel like Gen Xers need to be portrayed better in the media, and it's not any shade. They're not coming with any shade or hate. They just feel like baby boomers and millennials get all the shine, so they want to help change that narrative. Um, yeah, I had a fun conversation with them. So uh, without further ado, I'm not going to spoil the conversation. I, I, you know, I was about to do no spoiler, spoiler. So let's get into the conversation with uh, Eric Lloyd and Big Stu, Money, Sex, and Gen X. You know, I, well, I started I started this podcast in the middle of the pandemic because I used to go out and um, do public speaking to, you know, Black men and women. Uh, mm-hmm. mostly the youth, right? Because I used to do workforce development programs. And then after the pandemic happened, I didn't have my, my audience like that anymore. And then people have been told, telling me for a while, like, I should start a podcast at this. So I, I had nothing but time on my hands. So I started a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, and in that, and it evolved into this thing. Because the, the problem is, uh, with our, our young people, they had these limiting beliefs. Well, actually, your thoughts, too. Uh, I mean, I just break it down to young people limit on limited beliefs on what they can do what they could be and and i i recognize some of the things was based on because they can't be what they can't see because like if they only see me as the only one in my space doing what i do it's like ah it's an anomaly it's not i was like nah this is another brother that works down the down the hall from me i'm not saying right. there's mm-hmm. a whole bunch of us but there's, there's no more doubt. than you think and you could be one of us <laughs> as and so that was the big idea. And then it's kind of just evolved into this thing where I started meeting people from Africa, UK. And it's like, how do we connect with the blacks in the diaspora? Because, you know, Africa is not what people think. We got money over here. We'll invest in black people over there so that we can be as one. And y'all yeah, don't have to go through what y'all we used to cool, go yeah. through with the news. I was no like, question. I was like, this black venture capitalist out there? It was like, yeah, we got some black black billionaires out here i was like what all right, right. hold on plug me in T- let me let me learn more and so that's what this evolved in too so tell me tell me about y'all y'all podcast how did y'all get started how did the, the money man Gen X the money podcast, Sex Gen X get podcast started? came how, about how in the pandemic just like yours man uh yeah yeah we had a little i wouldn't say we yeah. had a lot of extra yeah. time on hands because <sighs> me and Stu both have children but we weren't we weren't moving around as much and so uh, an ex, my ex-wife uh-huh. actually introduced me to Stu uh-huh. a little bit before the pandemic. And the, the way this started is because I wanted to do a podcast for, for several uh-huh. years. I talked to a couple of my homeboys and all of them were scared to death uh-huh. to get on video. Scared. I don't, they were just <laughs> they didn't want to have these conversations Why that they we scared? have publicly. That's what they were. I sort of believe they were scared of. So. We would have these wonderful conversations uh-huh. about family and sex and jobs uh-huh. and careers and all that. And, and I'd be like, yo, we should do this and let other people hear these conversations. And they were like, nah, not trying to do that. 
So I pitched the show. I, so I ended up pitching the show to Stu one day when uh, we met. I think uh, it's the, <laughs> we met in person. I think it's the first time we met in person. And I pitched it to him, and he immediately got excited about it. He was like, "Yo, that's a dope idea." And then we kept talking, and I don't remember who said it, but one of us was like, "Yo, we should just do the show together, me and you." And we went from there. Yeah, it was. Man. It was. Uh, it, he brought the idea to me, but I have a. Initially, when I went away to college, Southern Baton Rouge, Louisiana, my my major was going to be broadcast journalism. And, uh, and actually, it was before okay. I switched it. And then, um, you know, I had some experience with some doing some radio sto- mm-hmm. stuff. I don't, yeah, I don't even think you know this. I, ho- uh, um, I used to go on the radio, WHPK, Hyde Park Radio what? at the University of Chicago. They had this hip hop show. So I used to go on there. I used to, you know, back when I was rapping, Stu, mm-hmm. Big Stu the rapper, the MC, and uh, I used to go on there and do okay. that. So I, I had this affinity with public speaking and and being in front of the camera and all of this stuff. So when he brought it up, it was just like sparked all of this stuff. It was like, man, let's it do it. So he, and that's what happened. He was like, man, I had this. I was like, man, we should do it. Like, let's go. And he was like, what? My, my people scared. I was like, let's let's make it happen. And that was what, May? Yeah, what did we say? April, May 5th? Uh, April, April 5th. 5th. Yeah, April 5th. No doubt. No doubt. That was the first episode. April 5th. And yeah. the first episode title was, was first interesting. Yeah, is, yeah. Um, first it was, episode. Are You a Millennial? Are You a Millennial? And basically, we were talking to Gen Xers who we thought were trying to okay. act like they were millennials. They didn't want to identify. We didn't want to identify. So we had, we had, we had that Gen conversation. X. That was a fun conversation. It was right. Cool. It was cool. <laughs> Man, that sounds like a fun conversation. I almost wanted to stare left and go into it right now. Like, you know what? I, 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 I got some. Hey, I look, know some, right some now. of us, some <laughs> of us could probably still pass for Gen X's. And something about our generation that's Man. 70, 71, 69, you know, 70, 71, 72, somewhere up in there. We still got something in our. Man. In our Culturally, no we look, a lot of us, no a lot of us look pretty good, man, for our age, man. I, you know, I don't know what it is. Our generation, well, a lot of our generation, Gen Xs, we, uh, we not aging like the the previous generation. Oh, I don't okay. know what it okay. is because I'm I'm a I'm 78. So at, at my at my day job, I oversee like uh, HR in the county organization, and people sometimes look right. at me and they like, yeah, yeah. He too young yeah. to be like running this right, whole right, thing, right, right. like yeah. Because I, I thought like, you I don't were know. a millennial I don't know. just by, by looking at you. I thought you were. I get that. I get wow. that all the time. No, he, he, he is. is. He, he is. is. He is. He no, no. Oh, he yeah. no. He's been excellent. He's been excellent. No, he no, no. I my, think I saw something. My 40s, I saw something bro, on your LinkedIn. Uh, I checked your LinkedIn. Uh, something yeah. told me that you was a Gen X. To, like, to oh, Big okay. Stu's point, like, like we yeah, all look so up. young. Yeah. I just yeah. immediately assumed, like, man, he said, okay, we got to do a millennial interview. Yeah, okay. They yeah. got this young guy. No. <laughs> well, he's still yeah, young guy. We all still young guys. <laughs> yeah, we saw still young guys. We ain't, we ain't too old. God we, got, we got God some time willing. to change. So, so I'm going I'm to take it back a little bit. See, because uh, uh, now a big student no doubt, put some no things doubt. in there with radio and so forth before his heyday, yeah. before you even knew him, Eric. <laughs> so let, let's take it back real quick. Uh, since since you brought it a little bit up, because what I like to do is I like to show the audience. It's not, it's not, it's not uh, where you start. It's, just, it's right, part of right. the journey, right? To, to get in there, right? So I'm a, I'm gonna go to Big Stu real quick. What was your first job? Uh, Oil Express. Oil That's Express. Like, a, like Diffy Lube. Oh, okay. Like Oil Diffy Express. Lube. It was. It was. Uh, okay. Diffy Lube. It was Oil Express. I, I was 16. Okay. It was right around the corner from my house. That was my first job, man. I, I right. changed oil what, on what, cars. What What did you learn from that that first job that you probably? Might hold. Well, you I mean, day. I know a little bit. I know, <laughs> I, as although, I, look, I ain't trying to get my hands dirty and nothing like that. I'm not the labor type. I'm a thinking type. But I learned a little bit about cars, uh-huh. man. I learned a little bit about cars and that. Uh-huh. I, I can change nice, oil on nice, damn near nice. any car or truck. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and okay. you know what was else? It was two things. Two things that had to stick with me about that job. One, rest in peace to Mister Nate Whitmall. He was the black mm. owner uh-huh. of this, basically, an auto no. company. 
They recycle. And we don't see that black. anymore. And he was I, in my neighborhood and he was old and he had a wife and he was committed and 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 and, and I loved Mr. Whitmore. And he was my boss and he oh, okay. he wasn't That's an good. asshole. You know what I mean? He was like he was he was like Dang. he was like my fuck he was like my grandfather. You know what I mean? It was like Man, that was great. Right. That was great. And the other thing, I, I re- land, I cannot believe that minimum yeah, wage at that. that time was like three sixty five an hour. His relative at the man. time, it was like, what? oh, I'm making three sixty five. When I say that today, it's like, man, I feel yeah, old man. when I say that, man. Yeah. Like three dollars. <laughs> you know that. So those were the things that kind of stick with me about Oil Express, my first job. Man. Eric, what was your first job? My first job, brothers, I was slinging. Pizzas. What's up, Pizza Hut? I was working at Pizza oh, Hut. Pizza I was 15 guy. years right. old. Um, I actually got recruited by a black man. He was the manager. He lived two doors down from me. And it was a beautiful thing. From Thursday to Sunday every week, it was super, super high volume. So I was in there cooking up and washing dishes, man. It was cool. Wow. Uh, one thing I learned is people like to steal. People wow. like to steal, man. I- <laughs> Man, Bro, yo, man, when I got hug, there, man. somebody Box stole fifteen thousand dollars out of the safe. Yeah, like two weeks after Ooh. I got there, and so Ooh. I was actually serious? part of the investigation because I was there. I guess when the money got stolen, so I'm like, this is my first job. Fifteen thousand dollars came up missing. All these police Ooh. are in there. They're interviewing everybody, yeah. and I'm just sitting there like, whoa. You know what I mean? Like, whoa. They knew I was too. Too Ooh. green to even Ooh. conceive trying okay. to steal some, you know what I mean? But like that was a lot of money. At the, think about fifteen thousand dollars in the in the early in the early nineties. Right. That's a lot of so money. It, today. Yeah, it was crazy. So I learned that. I also learned yeah. the the sense of treating right. people well. And I know that's one of those kind of cliche things that we always hear. But that guy, even though I respected right. him, he didn't. The manager, he didn't necessarily treat people very well. And I'm not going to blame him for the money being missing, but I feel like when people don't like you or they don't like your leadership style, it opens the door to stuff, you know? Yeah. Mm, yeah. But they do things they, they probably like, man. I'm I don't crazy. believe they ever you found out who stole, stole the money, money and the I manager ended up taking the hit. You know what I mean? He ended up. He, you know, they couldn't find out who else did it, so That's he took true. the hit. So I really believe somebody did that stew out of spite. I mean, of course, they probably wanted the money, but they were like, yo, he's going to take the fall for this, so whatever. Uh, Crazy. All right. I, which, which I, I want to dig into, is it Mr. Nate Whitmore? Whitmore. That you Whitmore. talk about? Nate Whitmore. Whitmore. Uh, and, and, and it kind of goes to your point, too, Eric, about treating people right. Like, why... Uh, I, I guess the question is, we don't see that uh, enough anymore, like black ownership and then good black ownership yeah. and people just kind of provide opportunities like Mr. Whitmore. Why is that? Why? Why? You know, not to get too deep and heavy this morning, but you why? Know, do we uh, see let me that let me jump back because I had this thought just yesterday and Sunday. I got super, super frustrated that I find it difficult. And Eric and I are an anomaly. That was another reason why I wanted to jump in with him because we kind of clicked. I find it super difficult to work with Mm -hmm. black men. I find Mm -hmm. it, I am challenged with working with other black men on, it's been my, I haven't had a lot of great success with, and so I was just simply trying to figure out like, what is that where we're not, honoring each other we're not you know our egos are super inflated around each other we're like juxtapositioning i don't know what it is and i wish it wasn't like that i wish it was easier because i know a lot of dope brothers but it seems like when i start talking about some real business they man Mm. and i I admit some of it is me too terrell you know like i'm trying to i'm trying to hold on to what i got and it's just this fight between black men and it even transitions to when I'm out of Walmart, when I'm out of like we mean mugging each other no still doubt. today. Like, damn, bro. Like, man, I, I'm the guy that's speaking. I'm the guy that's like, what's up? I'm the head now, but it's a lot to fight right. through. The fact that Good. dude is mean mugging me, 
He don't even know me. I don't know him. I'm not mean. So I'm I'm trying to be like, what's up, homie? What's up, good? You good, homie? And you know, but that's not the norm. I don't know why that is. Maybe Eric has some insight. Yeah, he's, man. He's I mean, and Stu, I want to say this too. Hey, like hey, they do that, that the mean mugging actually less in the shy than they do it on the East Coast. Like if you're on the East Coast, you you're gonna be mean mugging back Damn. and forth with people all day long. But to answer your question. I don't know, man. I mean, I'm guilty of it, too. Like, the, that's what I like about Stu. Like, I'll give you an example. When we work together, if I text him or he texts me, the first thing that we say to Rel in that text is peace. And that sets such such a wonderful Got tone peace, before you even Good. get into what it is you're doing. Mm-hmm. But, like, with other men, like to Stu's point, I think it's just the nature of men and just wanting to be very competitive. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm competitive by nature, and I'm always having to stop myself and this right. is just me being honest. I stop myself from competing with people, other men, all the time. And it's not because I'm jealous of them. It's not because I don't want to see other men do well. It's just I think I was just socialized to think like that. I want to be the best. I want to be the best. And so that's what I think it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I think at the end of the day, nobody succeeds alone. And um, something that a person I got to interview, the late Bernie Dorman, uh, founder of this space called CEO Space, he told me we we have to get into the spirit of cooperation and collaboration. Absolutely, and that's the way we absolutely, learn. absolutely. Mm-hmm. 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 Something about that when he said it, and then I see how he was moving, and then how these different people were connecting, and these are like top dogs. Uh, like people making millions and millions in the way they were working with each other. I was like, man, if my mm-hmm. brothers can get like that, we we could we could take back yeah. uh, mm-hmm. our ownership, our communities. Like, like how do I start to get this mindset into our, our brothers? Like, the first thing I'm doing with the po- podcast is change the mindset mm-hmm. of just all this black excellence out there, like like you fellas, right? And highlight that, and then we'll go into that. Like, how do we? shift that into ownership and all that other stuff so um now that you gave me a little bit of what your first job was in in a little bit of nutshell give me a story of the journey from going from your first job to mm-hmm. where you're at now in your career to owning yeah, your own man. podcast <laughs> give me that little, a little I, bit I can, of that I can go first and make it of, kind of make it super quick so luckily my father was plugged in he was one of the first black uh, Chicago police officers ever hired to the Chicago police department. And so that, and in the community, and we were like the first blacks on our block when we moved in during the white flight uh, era, we moved into our house in 70. I was born in 71. So we were that early in. Um, my father always had the plug. So he made sure that I always had a decent job, except for the first job. Like literally that, literally I got that. My cousin, <laughs> older cousin worked there. And my cousin plugged me in, like, man, I need a job. Okay. But my mom introduced me to entrepreneurship when I was 12. Although I was rebuking it. Okay. I didn't, I didn't, I was 12, man. I ain't thinking about that stuff. But those those lessons stuck with me. And then over the years, I found myself doing entrepreneurial things. And then, but I found myself hitting the ceiling or recognizing there was a ceiling in corporate. And I'm like, man, screw this. I can, I, I'll, I'll, I'll roll the dice on me. And then, you know, broad stroke. Here we are today. I haven't worked uh, for a, a company or an organization in, in the last seven years and been a, a part-time yeah. entrepreneur for more than 20 years. So that's 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 my journey, kind of a very broad stroke, but that's how I kind of got here. My journey was interesting. I mean, my family has lived in a lot of different environments, too, as I've talked about on the show. We've lived in the suburbs. We've lived in yeah. in, the, in the streets, if you want to call it whatever. But when we the time period where we were closer to the streets, I would observe a lot of street dudes. And some people might be like, "Well, how, what's that got to do with you being an mm. entrepreneur today?" But it, what it has to do is, I found that they were very, very creative people. And I've always been fascinated with this concept, Stu, of creating something out of nothing. And those brothers do that all the time. It might not be in the context that society wants it to be in. And we might say, oh, that's illegal and all that. But I understand that. But from a CEO, a COO, CFO perspective, a lot of these people were geniuses. And so I would sit back and watch them. And then from there, I started watching people, Terrell, in the um, music industry. 
Same thing. And a lot of street dudes came out of came. People came out of the street, went to the music industry. And I would watch them take these artists who knew no one ever even heard of before and turn them into superstars, literally taking something like unknown and turning this person into a worldwide star. And so I would watch it. I would be like, man, I wish I could do that. And then I would read those books. Remember, they had that book, Everything You Want to Know About the Music Industry. Did you ever read that? Oh, yeah. I read that from cover to cover because I'm like, I want to get in the music industry. I want to get in the music. So I never did get into the music industry, but it took me to real estate. And I know you share student. I think you had a, a realtor's yeah. license at one point or something. At one point, yeah, I did. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was studying. Late, late I 90. studied for the realtor's test, but I decided not to become licensed. But by me studying that, I got the real estate game down. And so I would always take it back to what I saw in the street. I'm like, man, I want to create something out of nothing. And so then I started working in real estate, and then that went to forming organizations. So I know, Terrell, you talked about doing workforce development. In Inglewood, probably about 10 years ago, we started an organization called the Greater Inglewood Community Development Corporation. And a large part of what we were doing was workforce development. That was a lot of the plans that we had and things that got executed. But it still came from creating something out of nothing. We took our idea and I started doing that over and over and over and over again, taking people's ideas and helping them start something. And then I said, hey, you know what? Why don't I just create a company where that's all I do? I help you take your idea, turn it into something mm-hmm. real mm-hmm. and build an organization or a company that can earn significant revenues. And so I'm still fascinated with these same concepts yeah. that I saw in the street and the music industry. Let's take something out of your head and turn it into something real. And that's how I've gotten here. And that's the same concept for the podcast. The, the thing about Stu that I love is his excitement was, was the impetus for us like moving forward. But I already knew how to take an idea and flesh it out. So it allowed us to move very quickly. Once mm-hmm. he said yes, we had episodes in the can like mm-hmm. a couple of days later, I believe, or a couple of weeks later. So, yeah, same concepts, but that's where it started. Mm-hmm. And I love that concept of taking something for nothing, just to go back to what you were saying. I got introduced into entrepreneurship later on in life. So because of my workforce development career, uh, about four years ago, a little company called Google came out here and they wanted to do a yeah. startup weekend. They got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's like they reached out to me. It was like, hey, we're doing this diversity, equity and inclusion thing. We have a hard time getting black people to these these startup weekends of black and brown people we we noticed as you somebody in the community doing this stuff could you help us promote it and i promoted it for them and then they's like why don't you come be a part of it and at the time their theme was it was around tech innovation and and entrepreneurship and i was like well i'm not entrepreneurship and i'm not into tech there's like oh you more entrepreneur than you know like mm. so spend the weekend with us you know no like no commitment but your time but i think you would be a great addition so I did. I spent the whole three day weekend out there. And it, long story short, the the group that I, I decided to work with, we won the pitch competition, got introduced wow. to angel investors and all this stuff. That's what's up. No. And I started my entrepreneurial journey right there. No. Wow. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. Dang. Dang. I'm a little jealous, man. <laughs> I'm a little jealous. I am busting yeah. my ass. <laughs> and you out there just like, I don't even think I just for me and winning no competition. Doubt. Yeah. And that's, that's great, when I started man. beating all these amazing, dope black entrepreneurs in different spaces. I like, I like, wait. We got a black entrepreneur in a medical <laughs> device industry. We got a black oh. entrepreneur. And, like, and I started beating yeah. all these folks. I'm like, I didn't even know. Like, now my yeah. mind is blown. It's I didn't even know. Yeah. Like, we was in these spaces. I didn't know there was no a question. black VC, venture capitalist yeah. group, right? Like, I, like, how do we not know these things? Like, our community yeah, needs to no know doubt. these things. And so I'm like, all right, yeah. I need to get interviews with all these people and put this out on display. <laughs> Man. No question. You know what's interesting about that? It made me think about my concept a little differently. Like sometimes I guess we can create something out of nothing, but you could be pushed by somebody else. Because mm-hmm. it's like they were like, well, no, you actually are an entrepreneur. You just don't kind of know it yet. And you took that and ran with it and did a, a bunch of different stuff. That's cool. Yeah, because they, they, what they helped me to see is that I, although I was creating workforce development programs for the government and the city, like, like, 
the the whole concept of what I was doing, it, even though it was in house under shelter under under money, like I was starting something from nothing. Like there was no Absolutely. program in play, and then I had to go out, find all the pieces, build the plane while we're flying it, and then it turned into this 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 million dollar program for you mm. that that Love it. and then Love and then uh, I, after I reverse engineered, I was like, oh, I did do that. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> let, me, let me ask. Let me ask this question. I want to know this question. I'm sure other people want to know. It's probably not the right question. You, you know, you're not supposed to ask this question. But did they cut the check when they asked you to promote? <laughs> That's the, know, the, the first thing I thought of. <laughs> did they cut the check for the promotions, man? So, because uh, they, they know for asking you to do stuff and then acting like they ain't got no bread. So they did not cut the check. You know what I'm saying? That's but, why I'm surprised. I'm That's surprised. why I'll be messing with these big tech companies. They 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 gave I, I to to they gave some good resources though. I I I I, I can't I can't lie about that. They hooked us up with a right. whole bunch right. of resources, right. including the the venture capitalists that we 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 talked to. They were, but unfortunately, oh, big deal. Here's, but here's the here's the here's the game too is that. The way bitch and capitalists work with black yeah, people is very yeah. different. <laughs> but like, like yeah. I'm gonna give you five hundred thousand, and, and I'm I want twenty percent of your company. But like, how does that work? Like twenty no, no. percent? That, that's see, I'm right. you know, I'm and, and I'm, like, that's and I'm not just, yeah, <laughs> and I'm not just writing you a check for five hundred. I'm I'm gonna disperse it. You know, I'm gonna reimburse you. I'm gonna, you know, maybe in a case you'll get the whole check written, but that's not the norm, Lay. particularly for black folks receiving v- VC funds. Lay. And to me, the worst part of it is when they give you that money, then they want to tell you what to do. Ooh, Ooh they you know they got twenty. They can have twenty percent of your company, and they talking to you like they have eighty because they feel like you work for them now. Yeah, Lay. so. I mean, we didn't take the money. Interesting. Just because you said y'all didn't take it. No, we didn't. Oh, yeah, smart. Because, because smart. of the term. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and plus, it's me and another brother running, and he's he's been in the game a little bit longer. And, and we was like, look, we if if we gonna take this thing to the next level, we gotta save money for if we bring on a CEO, a, a CFO, because no, doubt. no uh, doubt. If we want somebody good, we have to leave some leave equity some on the room. table. Yeah, yeah, right. No yeah. doubt. Right. <laughs> no. That was for that was good thinking. No yeah, doubt. So, so have you I wanted to ask you while we're talking about the VCs, have you heard of this firm in um in New York called Harlem Capital? Harlem Capital. Yeah, I heard of Harlem. Yeah, I heard of them. I think yeah, you know. yeah. They're doing some some big things out on the East Coast. Okay. Harlem Capital. I think it's three brothers. A friend of mine's one of the guys is his son. Uh-huh. A friend of mine's Joe Brown, one of those guys is his son. But I've been watching them for the last year and a half. They're doing really well. Yeah. They're doing really well. They're doing really yeah. well, like yeah. Black I, I VC firm. So I want to, I want to eventually get out to them as well, and then hopefully get them on the podcast. Um, and then the next oh, step is for us to kind of with this podcast to kind of do what EI EYL is doing, earn your leisure, uh, and get a strong network of like people like you and other other brothers together to see how we can build something mm-hmm. together. You know. From, yeah. from like with resources, knowledge, information. So let's let's jump into this because I, I always because yeah. you brothers are a ton of knowledge, and let's talk about what's one good lesson that life has taught you through this journey of going through this entrepreneurship phase and then building your own bi- podcast. What what would you say one was one good lesson life has taught you? I'll jump in with that one on this. Oh, yeah, man. Well, I was thinking that. about because I looked at the questions before we came on. I was like, what do I want to talk about on this one? But I think what I learned, one of the biggest things I learned was don't get t- get too caught up in people's status ah. when you're trying to build your company or organization. Uh-huh. And I think a lot of people, including myself, I got too caught up in that in the beginning, it's like, this person's a doctor or he's supposed to be a millionaire and all this stuff is, you know, it can bring cachet to what you're doing, but you also have to sort of look at, okay, this guy's a doctor, but like what actual skills and other resources is he willing to lend to what it is that we're doing? And I learned that the hard way. I learned that because I was very caught up in titles. He's an engineer. He's, you know, this person is a banker and all this or they went to this school and that school. And so that's probably the biggest lesson that I learned. Like, don't get too caught up 
in other people's status mm. Mm. or perceived mm. perceived status. Sometimes the status doesn't actually match mm. reality. Mm. That part, that's that's big facts right there. <laughs> no question. Mm-hmm. No question. Mm-hmm. No that's an interesting question though what's my one thing that i've learned and I, i'll say honestly i think some of my lessons my my greatest lessons have come within the last 24 to 36 months two to three mm. years recent really, okay. recent stuff and i think the one thing that i finally am am learning have learned is that success i think is more silent than loud you know, I'm six foot, six inches tall. I'm used to being able to walk into a space and command the attention and positioning like I'm a boss, right? And I did a lot of that when I wasn't, I ain't had shit, bro. I ain't had nothing. But now that I'm actually experiencing some success, not just monetarily, not just financial, but success and peace and my relationships as I'm growing in those areas, I don't have to say as much, and I definitely don't have to say it the way I used to say it. I think <laughs> when you start having some success and some peace, it's silent. You can just revel in the moment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And yeah. be cool with that. Yeah, I mean, that's my, that's my biggest takeaway to date. Nice. So like far, it's like, chill out. Be cool. Relax. You right. can be, and, and you'll be all right. Yeah. And, and I think that that's... That's when you get to the latter years of life when you realize success ain't just monetary. It ain't just money. <laughs> that's right. And I think that speaks to E's point about, um, you said something, Eric, about just when you were talking about um, your journey that, oh, per- the perceived perception. Oh, no, no. It was you, Tariel. You were saying you didn't get the money. They didn't pay. They didn't cut the check. But you got access to the resources, which oftentimes is way more valuable than whatever check they could have cut in the moment. Absolutely. You'd have spent that. Right. But when you get access to the resources, that's sometimes way more valuable than the check that would have been cut. That's Absolutely. the level of, like, you recognize it ain't always about the money to the point that you're making. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Because those resources might be available after the money. Absolutely. Out. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want this thing to last forever. So now let's, yeah. Yeah. Let, let, <laughs> let's dive into the steps of, the, of how you, because I know everybody's gonna ask me like, well, how did how did they go about making the podcast and, and, and creating the podcast? I know we talked about it a little bit, but give me the steps that you you took. I know my steps were a little different from yours, but the steps, give me the blueprint. So if somebody's listening to this, they're like, Man, I love what this brother's doing. I've been thinking about starting a podcast myself, but I don't know how to work with another brother because these these brothers out here acting scary or uh, you know yeah. like <laughs> he no e money. This is you. This is all you, yeah, brother. Yeah, so, is, look, look. Look, and I'm very clear again going back to that statement about working with black men. Eric McLeod is the host of the show, and he, I was asked specifically to be the wingman. Okay. And so I stay in my lane. And when I introduced the show, I said, I am the co-host. I used, I am the co-host. And so I think that's important, but I'm going to, I'm going to de- defer to E because this is his idea and I am here in full support. So E, how did, what were your steps to set up the podcast, bro? Well, man, I got to say this, like you, you might use that word co-host, but I look at it as a, a 50-50 partnership. Okay. And and that's how we work. Like, and, and to your question about how did it start, like, I think us understanding that from the beginning, that both of us weren't into trying to act like we were on a different level than one another and all this silly stuff. We didn't do that at all. We still don't to this day. We make decisions jointly. We yeah. won't even do an interview if the other person is not there. Well, we I, won't even do it. I appreciate y'all making the decision <laughs> to come on this podcast and giving me the love. I appreciate no that. Definitely. No doubt. No <laughs> doubt. The, uh, but one of the first things we had, I was thinking in my mind before I even met Stu, was like, we need a catchy name. Uh-huh. We need a name. So if I would encourage anybody out there that wants to do a podcast, think of something catchy. So our name is pretty catchy. It's the Money Sex Gen X Podcast. Three words, like money, people are interested in. Sex, you know, everybody's Everybody's interested in sex. But that third piece is kind of what ties it all together and brings a little bit more intrigue because you don't hear a lot about Gen X. You hear about baby boomers and you hear about millennials. So once I got the name down and I started saying it, everything else started coming together. Now, the other thing we did, we started to figure out 
who was strong in what areas. And this is the magic of the show because Big Stu is strong in technical, the technical aspects of things. Like you see, I got these uh, mic, these earbuds yeah, in. Yeah. These are things that he taught me to do. I don't know why he don't have his in it. Mine didn't but sink I- this morning, man. I was trying to get it sink. It didn't sink. I couldn't get him to sink, man. I'm, I'm looking like, at the screen like, why are you going? Right? Look, I'm look. looking like, brother, and I gave the advice and mine don't even <laughs> No, but he, but he but he taught me that he taught me like yo you see this green screen right. behind me he taught me like yo we need a green screen he's the one who had the foresight to say hey you know what let's not just depend on video let's have an audio version of the show and Terrell the the strongest part of our show is the, the audio. audio the audio right. is global mm-hmm. we got listeners in France Germany C- Canada all these different mm-hmm. countries and I didn't anticipate that. So that's where he's strong. Now, where I'm strong is I'm very strong in taking my concepts and turning Mm -hmm. it into a full-blown business. So we did an initial business plan where we mapped out what is the mission and vision of the show? What is it that we really want to accomplish? How will we make money? All these different things. And from there, we took it and started building a production team. Like it sounds like you have as well. Like we, we don't do so initially we're doing everything we're doing the social media we're doing the edit now we have a production team and that's where i'm strong with keeping the business on track and he's and super strong eric is also very strong what he's not going to talk any he's not going to talk any throw any random i uh opinions e money is the actual factual dude what are the stats yeah. What does the data say? And let's draw our conversation from that purview. That's also uh, super strong from Eric's Eric's point. I th- also just want to add. Look, I guess one of the I, I guess I'm about to answer one of my own questions. Like when you have a business partner, it's a black man, and you trust them, you ain't questioning them. There's no yeah. question. And so there was, I had because of how I was introduced to Eric. That's the part that is freaking mind-blowing to me. And I tell people this story all the time. It was Eric's ex-wife. <laughs> I knew Eric's ex-wife before I knew Eric, right? Yeah, no doubt. Uh, I was met, I was introduced to her from another colleague. She was doing this event or whatever. Anyway, a couple of years go by. I still am in touch with his ex-wife. It was, you know. So I reached out on, I did a Facebook post. I was running into a lot of money but it was leaving my hands faster. It was unbelievable. I couldn't believe that I was just going through this money, you know, the way that I was going through. And I reached out on Facebook. Does anybody know any financial planners? And for his ex-wife to get on, you know, hit me up and say, you need to get with my ex-husband. He's the best. I could I could not fathom that because I'm, a, I'm, I'm divorced. And me and my ex don't have that kind of relationship. I don't know anybody that has that kind of relationship with their ex- where the ex, the woman, is like, he's the best. I'm like, yo, ex, like, you talking, you promote, you like, that shit. And so from that point on, and I think that's the part, I may be blind to a lot of stuff simply because of the way we were introduced to each other. And and I have this, this amazing amount of trust in him. One, so we got the introduction. But two, he been everything that she said. Like, I see why she said it. I see, like... I'm where I was, what, two years ago compared to where I am today is, man, three, uh, 180, 180 term, man. So I got to bring something up. I got to keep it, keep it a buck, as they say. She's probably the only woman I've ever been with that would give me a recommendation (laughs) (laughs) for anything. Hey, man. That's heavy. The only one. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Now, now, that was interesting to me, too, though. I mean, I, I don't know. We just have a mutual respect for one another. You know, that's that's what it is, regardless of how the romantic relationship went. And not that it went poorly, but like you said, like typically your ex, you don't give a recommendation to. So, yeah, it's, that was interesting. That, you know what? I know this probably wasn't, I know this wasn't one of your questions, but let's talk about that for a second. Uh-huh. I have met some, and I'm in tune to what I, look, and I know it's probably skewed. I don't have any real data on this, but I see some other of our peers, they're not black, right? They got their podcast and it looks like they're having this wonderful success. They got sponsors and all kind of stuff which is oozing out of them is what the is what how I perceive it. Yeah. Uh, 
we have you know in in full transparency we haven't received any major sponsorships yet we've had some local businesses support what do you think the secret is to really breaking through and getting big companies bigger companies to see the value in our voices although there there are a million podcasts out there and i'm probably not exaggerating oh yes what do you think the answer is for companies that have the budgets to invest in spaces like what you're building spaces like what we're building and other black men black women are building do you have any any ideas about that yeah i'm I'm currently working on that right now so what my my team has been working on is so with one of the sponsorships that we're trying to seek like greenwood for example oh yeah they want to see like i the demographics the the data on our demographics what industry are these folks in you know the 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 median income and we haven't been surveying our audience to that degree and so uh, now now we have to go back and start surveying our find ways to to do it where it doesn't feel so intrusive right like get touch points to grab that data and also create community to show that the touch points of our community and what we bring to the table are higher touch points than what they're what they're what they're spending on big dollars right because they will spend the money, but they just need that. You did create that media kit so it shows the the the, the high those that demographic and those touch points to to say, hey, for every three thousand you spend with us, you get this return. You you possibly get this type of touch point with your investment to these these oh, select okay. groups that are very highly engaged in everything we do, and we only mess with individuals that we highly believe in that align with our message. And you are one of those so brands. That, so that should be, so you're saying that that should be highlighted in your press kit. Yeah. Mm. Now that's a jewel for us. Mm-hmm. I don't think we knew. I, I saw don't, your nails, I, I saw yeah, your like, uh, Okay. Well, I didn't know. I, I asked the question. So, you know, I didn't know. I had no, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to, we're trying to figure it out. Cause we believe like, oh man, we should have, you know, bright lean. We should have, you know, all these male Facial, you know, whatever. Yeah, no doubt. The uh, Axe body spray. I don't know what it is. You know, but we, should, we should have yeah. something. Yeah. Somebody should have cut a decent amount of check with us. But I guess it, if I'm on the other end of that, it does make sense. It's like, what's your what's your revenue, man? What's your what's your pull through rate? Like, how many people are you pulling in to actually uh, purchase from you, or what is there? But so that um, a lot of that makes sense. A lot yeah. of that makes because because we were the same way. It was like, all right, we just got to. We got five thousand on Instagram. We got like a, a a great following on the station. We got listeners in UK, South Africa, mm. Nigeria, Bangladesh. So we need to we need to figure out like what what. what uh, but when we show those numbers, that's not the numbers they want to see. They want to they want to see the other numbers. That those numbers matter too. But what does that mean? What does that mean? I, I see oh, all those, the translation. Translate okay, those okay. numbers for me. Like, I see you got all these okay. listeners and all these people following you, but what does that mean? Like, uh, what's the, who are they? Where are they at? How much they make? What businesses are they in? Like, to see if they, they want to know, if, is, is that my, is that the audience that we, we need? Uh, or that's the audience that we have, our, our consumer base. Because if it's not, then it doesn't make sense for us to spend this money unless we just, Makes sense. we just, I got to ask a quick question. I know this isn't the purpose of the show, but I just want to ask this while I'm thinking about it. How do you pull that data from from the audio side? Because like we use this audio platform and we can see how many people have listened to the the episodes, but we don't necessarily know who these people are. And that's the strongest part of our engagement. But we can't define that for our potential sponsors because we don't know. How do we find that out? We're on the wrong platform. So I use Simplecast and Simplecast with the advanced platform allows you to pull, like you you pay the extra to get that that data. Um, there's also another uh, website. Ah, oh, man. I just had it up. Simplecast. Let me write it down. I'm, I'm getting that right now. Um, and, and Simplecast uh, has it, or, or whatever you, who are you using to stream? Uh, we use uh, Buzzsprout. So see if they have a, a a a package up. I'm not sure what tier package they have that pulls that data mm-hmm. um on their okay. on their on their platform. There's also another ah man, I wish I didn't I was just on this the other day. Uh, see if I can find it again real quick. 
it's something that I'm about. The other thing I was wondering too, like with these sponsorships, I was wondering, is it like the music industry where it comes down to the relationships of, of whoever your business manager is or your PR people in terms of getting sponsorships? Like I wonder, do people get sponsorships sometimes when they don't have the numbers, mm-hmm. but the people who are managing them just have some really dope relationships with people. Yeah. It's and they're like, yo, give them a chance, give them a shot. So I think in this business too, it's, it's, it, cause you know that old saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I'll do you one better. It's who knows you. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Yeah. So, yeah. so who knows you? once the, the people that you're trying to connect with know, know who you are, they just start sending people your way or your name starts getting mentioned in the rooms when certain deals are happening. Like, Hey, you yeah. know what? Big Stu and Eric, they got an audience in this and they could probably help us fulfill this. Right. Right. Cause I like that. Cause you top of mind, yeah. like when, when they trying to right. do something. Yeah. And so that's how I've been able to, in my workforce development career, how I got to be able to, you know, work with the mayor and then his affiliates and so forth, because I was, I, I helped them build this. So I was top of mind when the other deals were being mm-hmm. made. And so they would, my name would be mentioning rooms that my feet haven't even touched yet. Right. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah, I feel like we've mastered it in our in our careers and our practices, but we haven't translated that into the podcast yet. Which is exciting because once it once we have that aha moment mm-hmm. and we're able to transfer that that wisdom over here, yeah. it'll be a beautiful thing. But we're thinking, okay, this is corporate and this is my business, and then this is the media. Yeah. But we need to marry the two. Yeah, and it's, we need it's to marry, the, marry two. the two. They 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 both one and the same. They both uh extensions of your brand uh of of who you are in these these corporate spaces so treat it as such and then once you start to marry those two you'll start to see how it takes off in a different way and it might evolve too just a little bit because like what i what i was intending to do first with the podcast was just highlight voices and then it turned into this shift where oh there's a there's this other business i mean there was going to be a business element too but not the way i was thinking and then so now okay. I'm, I'm i'm slowly pivoting what this could be right? Mm-hmm. Right, right, right and you're like five months in yeah i'm five months in how many episodes hmm. got 20 something okay like 20 something nice episodes. nice so i started okay. on top of this year and it, it, it started moving a lot faster than i thought it was gonna move let's just say that yes, it is. <laughs> yes it is. i thought i was yes, gonna be on is. this way length for at least a good year before anybody really recognized who i was or, and, and i was like whoa like this is all right. Okay. So people, people are really tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. So it's been, a, it's been, a, it's been a beautiful ride as, as you, I'm pretty sure the same thing with you. Uh, like when, when you guys came in the game, like how long did you think it was going to take you to, to start to get the buzz that you were getting? Hmm. I, 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 I don't think we even asked ourselves that question. Yeah, I don't think we ever thought about that. I don't think we ever thought about it. Yeah. I, I don't think we, I don't think we've ever really had that, Nah, question how long do we think that this is going to take but the way we do our our episodes by seasons okay you know we we, we have seasons seven episode seasons mm-hmm. and then we go off for a few weeks or a couple of months at a time okay and i think you know we're in season four i don't even i don't even know eric to be honest man I, to be honest i think we just started thinking about We've only thought about season five, and recently we started thinking about upwards of season seven. Mm. Yeah, no doubt. You know, we're, we're I've I've put out there. I'm looking forward to like season ten. Nah. Yeah. So what made no you go but, with the the season format yeah, instead yeah, yeah. of the episode yeah. format? You want to answer that, man? Okay. We didn't have the capacity. We didn't want to burn out. Yeah, we didn't have the capacity of burnout. Or... <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Not out there. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm remembering something too, Stu. The other reason why is I related back again to music. 
So I look at each season as an album. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking, I'm like, yo, we, we need to do our ill match. Okay. And I think we yeah, need to do our Eric Lakes, first introduced you know the idea I mean? of seasons, we, we it made sense to me, album. especially and coming so out of that pandemic each time. Each season gives us the, the Netflix and all of these TV shows, power. Album. Everybody has seasons. And that's seasons. what we're chasing. And they that's have these chasing, cliffhangers. You know? and they, I don't know. This season you know, has you been You can know good. what to anticipate. Think, so it gave us a some of our, uh, uh, I think the greater opportunity to promote We still haven't got to that class. Premieres so, and that, yeah, season finales, that that was, and was you know what the thing. episodes are for the. You can tune in. You know, I, it's good. Now. It just it's made good. sense mm-hmm. to bring kind of that yeah, television good. production. You got the work season finale to, actually it, coming up Sunday. The audio it's, um, side of why things. do you, you need know. a therapist? And uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. It's a good season. The- Season four, this see this this album, this season, the season four, the one that we're this this one is hot. This is a hot right. season, man. Okay. Why do you need a therapist? Boy, that is a loaded question. But I, I like with all the generational trauma, I think every black person needs a therapist. <laughs> Hey, look, let me, let me, let me, let me put this out here. Look, e-money is a wordsmith. Okay. E-money is a wordsmith. He's, he, he is a, he's, he's cold with the wordplay. His questions ain't as right. obvious as you think they are. I think I just, matter of fact, we just did an episode on Sunday. Why does your sex life suck? And he's, he, I don't know you slipped the answer in at the end of the show. Because if people say, well, why did your sex life suck? Well, you assuming that my sex, my sex no, life no. don't suck, blah, blah, blah. But E summed up the whole episode towards the end of the episode with one phrase. He was like, we're not, some of us may not be doing sex there you go. right. There you go. Now, think about that. Why does your sex life suck? Right. And then for E to say, you're probably not even doing sex right. That's and it what right he there. meant from that, That's this is what right I took there. from it, because it came out because in the like, episodes. Because if I say like, to you, fam, how like, you yo, why did your, your lady, sex life you, suck? In, the, the level of intimacy. The first thing that most people are going to say is, my sex life Where sex suck. begins before it's the good. bedroom. I'm good. You know what I mean? And that's what we realize in the episode. Maybe like, why the your reason sex why people's sex lives aren't so that great is because, these especially for men, sometimes we assume that we're doing such a great job. It even takes me sometimes to understand with and these women, very, but the women are telling us, where yo, he's coming from. you're not doing a very great unique unique job way to draw you, you in. You are. And the answer and like, is why not do you need a therapist? What seems you made to a comment, Terrell. It's like, when you everybody first needs question, one, but right. I'm asking, so why do you why need Why do you need one? a therapist? It's Your reason for needing a therapist is like, might be different answer the question, like, why are the reasons you so think you need one, but what's your a therapist? Or do we need a therapist? Yeah, we try to get people to think. If so, do you like, does your sex life suck? Like, why, why do you want to get married? Like, right. that was a good one. Right. He has I don't a need very, one. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, and, and usually, and yeah, we try man. to, we do it in a non judgmental way. Uh, that's the other thing I love about the show. Like, Stu and I will tell you, like, anything we're talking about, we've made all of uh-huh. these mistakes, all of them. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we don't judge people, but we want to fully discuss the topic. And let's just consider that maybe your sex life does suck. Right. right. Maybe. Or we had an episode, one of my favorite joints, which was, is college a joke? And we got a lot of emotional reactions to that. It's kind of, people like, what do you mean college is a joke? Are you kidding me? And this, and a lot of behind the scenes <laughs> conversations, students, I didn't even talk to you about like family. They hit me up like, yo, you bugging? Like, yeah. why are you talking? But it was like, hey, could you just consider for one That's second right. that Especially maybe college if, is a joke? Yeah. Just maybe. Especially if somebody is like, just I don't maybe. need no therapy. Maybe not. Then we can so bring that, that yeah, out of that to question too. That well, let's talk about it. You don't need one, but let's talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We brainstorm. 
No, I can't say that, brother. No, no. We, we brainstorm. Right. We brainstorm. Mm-hmm. We brainstorm. We'll come to concepts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh man, don't give me that. <laughs> I feel the same way about you, brother. For real. Mm-hmm. 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 That. Oh, that's a whole nother. That's man. Yeah, I don't. How do you come up with these topics? These because these are really good topics. Very good topics. Like, how do you? That's, he, it's all. It's all. He, well, it's not. No, it's not. I was about to tell a lie. I was about to lie. We brainstorm, but uh, but uh, look, I'm not jocking this dude, right? <laughs> I, I ain't swinging from his nuts like that, bro. The dude just when you have greatness among you, <laughs> among you. You need to honor that, man. Right. Let me give Eric his flowers today. The dude cold. Right. The dude cold. He helped me. I man, appreciate the dude that. Is cold. Appreciate he helped that. me with my finances, bro. Look, I'm getting to the, I'm getting to the, and how do we come up with the topic? Let me tell you, Eric is underappreciated. He is undervalued. He is, he is the financial whisperer. He is the financial <laughs> therapist, right? Like straight up, bro. I'm making ten twenty thousand dollars a month blowing it and he helped me turn that game around and it was so it's because he comes up with these topics and from from my purview from my my optics he comes up with these topics because how he sees things is one is eye opening mm. but he understands that there's a deeper there's there's a deeper cause mm. there's a deeper reason than what's at the surface. Yeah. And he has a very unique way of helping you to see it without putting you on the defense. Yeah. See, that's the thing. See, you know, without putting you on the defense. So he could tell me, he didn't say, man, you just <laughs> bullshit with your money. You need to get your act right. He You're made me, un- there were a couple of sessions where I dropped tears. You're not good because, at all. And he didn't and then the hold that student, against me, student, you know, and he I doesn't really do that with anybody. He'll mean. come at your what head, does, but he'll come though, at your head in a way like, that he makes it you are taking ownership you know for your I mean? shit. Because right? I think if I'm and left so to my own devices, it would be very rarely meet people who can put those pieces of the puzzle together to help you overcome or identify or self-reflect what's going on internally without you being defensive humor, about it. And he's gregarious so, and all these different words things. And so it allows us to have this insights. He's a data guy. And, this and he just knows to the show how to where if uh, we were doing get you to see we're already whatever might be the issue it without it putting you on the defense. And you know I think I mean? it comes like across just, in these this topics is the facts and all that we that. need no, to talk we're about that often we shy away from. It's two black men on the screen. They're not arguing. They're not competing. And they're really just wanting to get people to think about the topic at hand, and it's, it's a cool thing, man. It's, it's actually we talked about. It's therapeutic so, for both of us. It's therapy, man. It's facts, bro. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Uh-huh. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That is a fact. That is a fact. That is a fact. I-, I do like to claim that because it's like I don't ever want people to think I'm just talking and well, all these theories. theories. And you know, we go to yeah, school and get these degrees the, and they the give you a lot of theories. So like, like he, he ain't no fan. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He's not it's just an advisor. He's a financial thing. therapist. And you know what? Yeah, that's you e-money. Gotta e-money to financial therapist, brother. That's that's the reason why Big Stu and I work so well. I want to listen. I want to listen. You know, he don't help you with your business. And I used to get uncomfortable when he would call me a financial therapist. I send him clients. You know what I mean? I refer. But I understand what he means by that. You know, when you go to a therapist, he knows. 
Listen and look, to let me, this is another so Eric doesn't say that. But he's helping you know, I don't need to dominate the go from zero for us to, to multi millions. Yeah. He, yeah, this yeah. guy sitting right there, has helped pe- businesses go from zero ideation to multiple million dollars. Mm. How many people in your network do you know like that? Maybe you, Tyrell. What? You probably know a lot of people. <laughs> I didn't know a lot of people like that. What? Right. Uh-huh. A whole different ball game. Mm. Very true. Right. No doubt. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I lost track of time, man. I actually lost track of time. <laughs> yeah, and that's the biggest thing. You hit it on the nail. Listen, um, a lot of a lot of things that I tell the, these leaders when I'm in the room with them <laughs> and they ask for advice. It's like look, a lot of times you as no leaders doubt. in these high positions, yeah, y'all, y'all listen to respond because y'all y'all risk mitigators and you've been trained mm. to be so for so long that you listen to respond. What yeah, I we really do, doing I need you to really listen to understand. And in that yeah. way, you could be better risk mitigators because you, you'll you hear what's not being said. And then you can leave some room for empathy for people to feel like yeah. they've been hurt and then attack the real issue instead of what's on the surface. Uh, and that's how we move yeah. forward. And yeah. so I love the fact yeah. that you really take the time okay. to listen, E. Man, this is, you know, this has been a great interview. Like, I feel like we could do this all day. <laughs> If we had the time, yeah, I, I lost we had the time. So let's see if we could. This is fun, you know, because I, I, I would love to yeah, do two hour easy. interviews, but my show ain't built like that. I'm not Joe Rogan, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure people will stay all that long. <laughs> you could though, you could. I mean, we, we, we. Our last episode pushed up hour and forty five. We try to stay at ninety minutes. Uh-huh. But we look up sometimes and the conversation is so engaging. <laughs> you know, it's so engaging sometimes. We look up in an hour has passed, oh, an hour 15, that. and it's like, oh snap, we still gotta we still gotta finish finish our show. Right. But there have been a this season, this is why I say it's one of the best seasons because there've been a couple of episodes where we like, man, we could keep going with this, bro. We right. damn, mm. hey, we gotta shut it down. Oh, because there's we, no we have our okay, own parameters, that. you know, our own template for our own show. So yeah, if we were free flowing, and we said, "Man, we're gonna go as long as we could carry it out, as long as we could keep them." We could, be, we could have a uh-huh. two, three hour show, bro. Play. easy, Play. easy, easy. Especially are either of you. Are, I know Eric is not. Tarell, are you? Are you on Clubhouse? Yeah, I'm on Clubhouse. Uh, people were telling me I need to get on there more because they be having some rich dialogue and conversation. So it's amazing. It's amazing. I'm telling E about it. E gonna, E gonna thank me later there. when he finds the time for. It. But a lot of times, some of those clubhouse conversations, they go for like six and eight hours. I, I can't be on that long. <laughs> and But that's a, that's part of the beauty of it is you can jump off, go do what you got to do, run to the store, uh-huh. depending on, and come back and jump right back in. Like, it's not oh, over. Because right. there's no there's no replay. Uh-huh. Like, I was in a... There's no replay. There's no, no replay. It's like I was in a room last night with Grant Carter. Okay. That's the closest yeah, I've been. I gotta to get on this too. That's that's, that's another man. example of that in foresight that he brings to, to the show. Like taking he always questions, is coming uh, up with these things. Now, that's the only advice I haven't time. taken to your um, students. We'll I got to that later. But I, don't I think know. that I, I, I just I, feel like it's gonna take a long time. I know, and it's not. And I know that you always come with things that are right exactly. But I just feel like it's gonna be such a big time. And include clubhouse because that's that market is is booming. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Thinking, and they bro. opened it up just now to Android, so you don't have to be an Apple. It's open to Android now. That's right. So it's about to get even more ridiculous. <laughs> now, when we get to even when we get to seasons eight, seven, and eight, there's definitely got to be a clubhouse play because yeah. you could have smaller conversations it, off the topic that you released or the season you released uh, or episode on there, and it's gonna get people all fired up. Then they'll probably go back to the podcast, mm-hmm. and then they want to come talk about it on the on Clubhouse. So. It's crazy what's happening on Clubhouse. Yeah. Come out. Okay. 
Oh, okay. Now yeah. you got you me been fighting that. it. Schedule it. Okay. Yeah, you been. All right. It, now, I will, I will tell you this. It might be. Yeah. You might find yourself down a rabbit hole with Clubhouse. Like, okay. that's a real thing. Okay. Like, with TikTok, I, like that. TikTok, I, can, I hate that I even got into it because it's a damn rabbit <laughs> hole, man. You'll be on that shit, man. You know? <laughs> that's why I got to regulate, try to regulate TikTok to the end of my day. Right. As, you know, because I, okay. I can't do it during the... Because you'll be on there for 20 minutes at a time, man. Right. It's like, no. No, 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 we can't do right. it. And what I what I try to do, so Eric, what you got to try to do is like me, like because uh, I, I find myself sometimes going down those rabbit holes with Clubhouse and TikTok and so forth. I try to only use it an hour at a time or two hours out of my day. Like I schedule the time, and uh, and I say, I'm, I'm yeah, okay. Schedule the time. Can you, so you can say, leave comments I'm be on about Clubhouse? business like on here, like, like network. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, so I don't. I don't go on there and I be in these random like, oh, you know that sounds interesting. Oh, and then I I found myself oh, okay. doing stuff that okay. ain't ain't business related. All right, Stu, I'm gonna get on there, man. Get so, on. so I'm gonna... okay. Yeah, Very intentional. Like I, I I got an hour in the morning for social media. Here's how I'm gonna divide that time. Okay, so we would go in a couple of rooms together forward, to do our right? thing. Is that how it would work? And that's usually getting into somebody's room. Oh, we would have uh, our... getting invited oh, to the stage, okay. saying something. You know that adds oh, value, okay. or, right. or you know going into yeah, social media, okay. leaving comments on somebody's gotcha. page that that's that is in my industry okay. that's highly looked up to, leaving something that adds value. Stu, I'm getting on and there then after that today. You know, engage with a couple of people, then then peace out. Uh, today, so not there all day. <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm talking no. about social media, Dang. like in general. <laughs> so in Clubhouse, you can. Raise your hand, get called to the stage, add some value, and then go back down. But I'm, I'm gonna put you I, I, we, we, <laughs> on in the off season, bro. We'll spend some time because it's definitely a strategy to it. It's not just getting there. I mean, you can't to explore, but we got. I got a strategy in mind it. for us. Yeah. I'm doing. Yeah. Um, no, we would we would host our yeah, own. You can host your own room. It's, it's not your own. Room. Money takes Gen X will have a room. And we would be doing kind of what we're doing here, there, to bring people in to our YouTube, right, to our, you know, Instagram or whatever it may be. Hey. Great question. Oh, hey! Hey! Okay. Look at we Yeah. <laughs> I, y'all, y'all heard it, y'all Watch heard it first on Rise Panors. He's getting in there today. Oh. So about time this episode <laughs> drop, if he ain't on there, I want you to go to the Money Sex Gen X podcast and say okay. eric why you ain't on clubhouse yeah now he, now he, <laughs> he, i ain't worried because i know i know uh scotty pippen that's the scotty pippen of podcast <laughs> pimping right there and if he say he gonna do something guess what i gotta do relax because it's gonna get done so i'm good he said he's gonna yeah, do it right. i ain't worried about it all right so let's let's start the the wind down close out like this so uh, for for anybody who's listening, uh, let's let's do this. If, if somebody, Man. if you were to give advice to someone who wants to no start a career in entrepreneurship, yeah, uh, my uh, advice would be podcast, really simple. Like, you know, most of the done. time when you start what's, what's off as an entrepreneur, you you're in a corporate oh, environment. You can close it out. Start um, really analyzing just, how look, your do job it. Face or how your company and do it away. is running. Anyway, stop start talking about it and get out there and do that. Just do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. That's my advice. And I don't have anything else. And do I it. You got an idea? You'll stop find somebody in that organization. Sure. That will what do you think? What do you think? What do you might think? Take Go a do it. While. Somebody and, and then let me know what the results after were. After hours we can at the bar, they'll look, tell you I, I how to run. Big Stu was going to start uh, taking have, those insights do it. Be like Nike and, and just do it because he got a whole this collection. Who listens on the audio platform? It'd be something really simple. I'll give you an example. I was working with this company that used one note. I joined collection. He got the original. He got the crispy. Like any they have. call them Wu Tang. The put it in one the you you say one and do the same thing the in your startup. Leaves. So okay. that when new people come in the company, you don't have to keep I revisiting heard. topics. They can just go into one note. So yeah, just observe how your job is run and take that stuff and bring it back to your company. That's my advice. Mm. 
Nice. I, I I love that. I love that. So so what do you guys think the future has in store for, you know, specifically our peoples when it comes to podcasting yeah, and entrepreneurship like like our own business? What I would what, say what, on that, that is like you, and Gary Vee's I used to listen I think to we Gary haven't v. even began to scratch ago. the you know, he's surface very dramatic. on but Gary for me and I'm just in the next 20 years it's going to get to a point where absolutely you have phenomenal to have to a me level of proficiency in, this space. in the media for example I'm Social saying media this, I don't think be YouTube, an entrepreneur. I don't think YouTube and so is I even feel like at, as time at goes on people are going to continue to realize and understand right? that like yes I and have it's to an amazing on LinkedIn outlet. We all, I do there need an IG page I have to have a presence on Facebook right and I think you'll continue you to the, see people not only understand that but continue to do it at higher and higher frequencies and levels we're all our and own I do network. think, even though we all can tell our own stories, we all can tell our own perspectives. I think there's going to continue that, to be I think even is the more future because people understand media. the power. Black media, even if you got three people all watching your show, you still have a voice to project and that the voice stories counts. from our perspective. And now you have a medium where you can let people hear you love it, for love free. It. And I think that's going to continue to to happen. Oh, yeah. Man, I love all that. I love all that. Um, and, and I think even with all the social media that we have, I mean, you see what's happened. We were just talking about Clubhouse, the new emergence, another new outlet, a medium, a voice. Oh and yeah, it's just oh, blown yeah. up, and you could be right. in the same room That's as because right. I, I know I've been in the rooms with Oprah, with Tiffany Haddish, Kevin Hart, like a lot of celebrities. Been, I was like, man, okay. well, we definitely be doing the. I, I we want to always be with the podcast, the, the Money Sex to that person, right? Podcast um, <laughs> dot com that, is where you can find us. Our website, gap, right? we're on so, all the social virtu- media platforms. And virtually too, we are we wrapping up season four, but we're gonna start cooking up season five really, really soon. Prior and to the, the pandemic, thing I think while Sue saying that he likes all this these season two, we have some really, really good guests. Virtual, and our whole rooms, thing is we love celebrities and all of that, but there's some dope right? Gen Xers right? out there that You're people in don't San really Diego, know about. Is and we're trying Chicago. to continue to I'm give them a platform to let them talk and get people to know them. We dismissed that prior to 2000. Everybody has tremendous value, and there's some super dope Gen Xers out there. So you're going to continue to see that from our money sex Gen way of making deals. That's right. Make business happen. That's right. That's right. Right. All right. So, what 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 projects are you you brothers currently working on? And and, and give all information where people can find you. Uh, yeah. 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 No doubt. Yeah. No way. Yeah. It's coming though. It's coming. Mm Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. You have not. Mm -hmm. 
I, I love it. Yep. Money, Sex, Gen X is the is the project. That's that's the most important project oh, to discuss here today. The the, the brand <laughs> will continue to grow. We've got some. We're constantly creating new merchandise oh, and and go. avenues. Go. Uh, go. We're working on. Can I? Yep. You know, we're working on a platform for Black business owners um, that will add value to us as a community of people. Um, we will continue to grow. It's like you're watching. If you're in tune with us now. You're seeing us before we got on and popping because we ain't even on yet. We ain't even on yet. When we get on, it's, it's coming. We on our way. This is great. We and um, I'm just super excited again for the future. What's yet oh, to come? No, we no. we you have not seen our best yet. Woo. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you have an open, have you have an open invite. Hey, to so come y'all make sure y'all stay too, tuned, bro. all my risepreneurs out there. Money, sex, Gen X right. is the key right. to live. Money, sex, Gen X. Yes. Keep your okay. ear right. Money, sex, Gen X. Money, sex, Gen X. Money, sex, Gen X. Money, sex, Gen X. That's dope. That's dope. Appreciate that one. That's dope. Fellas, this has been a a, a fire interview. I, I'm so, so, so glad and 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 happy that i got to meet you we got to have this conversation i'm going to put all the social media so i'm gonna get that social media all the links for you so those who are driving i'm gonna put it in the the note section so you can connect with them with the podcast big up, big up, big business up. with them all their all their contact information i'll get that uh big Stu eric been a pleasure once again and i hope we get to do this again once we we do the next season how how's that sound wow. Excellent. I mean, I want to get back. Oh, let's do it. I, I, I yeah, we bring it. It ain't nothing but a word. You just tell me when. Just like Eric, my word is bond. So, you know, if I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. All right. <laughs> All right. No doubt, bro. Right. We got you, brother. Shout out to San Diego. Shout out to that West Coast. Woo-hoo. Much love, brother. Shout out, shout you, out to the to the shy too. You know, uh, I got some some friends out there right now doing their thing. My boy Ronald Preston Clark, um, author of uh Vinny a Love Letters out there now. He works at one of the schools out there in the shy town. Uh he's originally from SD, but he's out there doing his thing right now, loving it. Okay, okay. All right. Love, man. All Until right. next time, brother, man. I'm it's I appreciate it. I'll, I'll talk to y'all soon. Thank you for listening to another episode of Rise Urban Nation. Thank you for taking the journey. Be sure to like, comment, and smash that subscribe button. And stay connected with Terrell on and off the show. Follow at Rise Urban Nation on all platforms. Do what you love, love what you do. Don't chase the money, let the money chase you.